the high majority of people are incredibly bearish for 2023 and including uh -huh. some of the world's top economists where we had this cross and then we got rejected once, twice, three times, and then we had an explosion through of price for the first time in over a year. If we break it, we're in trouble. We don't have a lot of market structure below it. Honest, let's hope you're well. Welcome to this video. We have a very special guest, as you can see here uh, in this particular video. We are joined with Steve Courtney of Crypto Crew University YouTube channel and also of the, uh, the founder and CEO of CryptoCrewUniversity.com. Welcome back. Before we started this session, it turns out you're not in Australia anymore. Tell me where you are. So I brought my family to Hong Kong. Uh, my wife is from Hong Kong and we wanted to give my son a traditional Chinese New Year experience. So we were here for the holidays and, and we're still here in, in beautiful Hong Kong. Let's hear from you, Steve. What is, so what is your view uh, on what's happening on Bitcoin? I have my own views, obviously, but I'd like to hear from someone else. I'd like to hear your opinion. Let me share my screen. A lot of polls that I've seen are the high majority of people are incredibly bearish for 2023 and including uh -huh. some of the world's top economists, including some of the, the top banks, some of the people that called past crashes. They're all, they're all saying that 2023 is gonna be devastating. And I think they bring up good points, although the Bitcoin charts are saying otherwise. By the way, Alessio, before we continue with the charts, one other poll that I thought was interesting, Ben Cohen had a Twitter poll asking about 2023. And at the time that I saw it, there was maybe 23,000 people that voted. And it was like 73% of the people uh, predicted a recession, a bad recession for 2023. Yeah. So interesting, but here yeah, we are. It is interesting. But, but here's a, here's an interesting point as well, Steve. Um, people often misinterpret that recession. See, so a lot of people think ah, recession means therefore a bear market in stock markets and a bear market in Bitcoin. That's where that's where they could be wrong. So you could have a situation where you have a recession but yet the market going up. People don't remember this, perhaps. But 2009 was the worst year of the recession. Peak unemployment was in 2009, after the great crash and recession of 2008. Uh, but 2009 was the bottom for the stock market, and then it rallied up. Uh, I'm not saying it's the exact same scenario now. Okay, we'll have to wait and see. But we have to just remember that just because we may, we may be in a recession, it doesn't translate to a crash or a continued bear market. Uh, that those two are not the same. But yeah, good point there, Steve. Thank you. Yeah, you're 100% right. And, it, and it's showing right here in this chart. So we're on the yeah. monthly chart for Bitcoin. Down here at the bottom, we have our stochastic RSI. And what yeah. we know about the stochastic RSI is that's the momentum. So right now, for 396 days, our momentum has been below this 20 level. And we've been here before. In our past bear market, it was 395 days. And the one before that was almost 600 days for us to recover. And we know that yeah. once the stochastic RSI gets above this 20 level, that's, yeah. that said that the bear market was officially over and that we were transitioning from this long, extensive bear market and we transition into the very beginning of the bull run. And it also happened in 2018. Once we got above this 20 level, that was the very, very beginning of that next bull run. And we're yeah. not quite there yet. We're not officially over with the bear market, but we've turned a major corner. We can't yeah. argue that, you know, we can argue if Bitcoin's going to go up, down, backwards, and sideways. But what we can argue is that in Bitcoin's entire history, we've done this move back above here two other times, and both of them said the same thing that the bear market was over. So we're going to have to wait until the end of February for us to close here. And then we're gonna have to wait for the end of March to confirm as support. But we need our slow line for the stochastic RSI to get above the 20 level. And by the way, it's not just to get out of the bear market. This chart actually said uh, when we would have our mega crash. It's once we fell below here with the 20 level, 2015, we fell below here. We had a fake out rally of 50% coming up to here and then a mega crash. We did the same exact thing in 2022. And that's what we covered on our channel. Uh, we said, look, we have no idea how large this fake out rally is going to be. But we know that our other data points are 48% and 50%. It happened to be 47% 
we rallied from here up to 48k and crashed down so this chart yeah. is saying like look bitcoin's bear market has turned a major corner and it's starting yeah. to shift its momentum it's not official yet and there are some other charts like i love this chart here on the macd 12 day macd yes. we had this cross of the macd on the 12 day this was my only yeah. wish for christmas alessio i wish <laughs> i just wished to have this macd cross because it's right. only happened five other times and it happened in every single bear market and it happened after the bottom was in in every yeah. bear market dating back to even 2012 we had this macd cross after the bottom was in 2015 we had this macd cross after the bottom was in 2019 we had the macd cross after the bottom was in even the covid crash we had this macd cross yes. on the 12th day once the bottom was in so when we had it here the high majority of people 75 80 percent said the bottom's not in but this chart yes. says that the bottom is in and we can only go based on the facts and not human psychology and human emotion so it's interesting because i use a um, very similar chart to yours as well you use a 12th day i use a two week time frame yep mm -hmm. yeah it's not that different it's not that different and no i agree with you i i i was watching the two week time frame macd exactly the same reason you're using it and you're right it had it has had the macd crossover around this time frame um is has a high win rate no false signals no false. The, the way I use it, though, and people, uh, maybe this is the way you use it as well. I wait for crossovers that are below zero. So uh, I don't like, for example, I wouldn't have used that crossover that occurred, the one you're showing there in 2021, because for me, that occurred significantly above zero, uh, the one that's uh, prior to this one, if, if you look at the upper one in uh, 2021. Oh, this so, is just yeah. this is just showing our audience that this was a cross, uh -huh. but it didn't meet yeah. our strategy. This was just exactly the blow. This was our double top in Bitcoin. Yeah, or actually, the way I would have said is uh, because it's a significantly above the zero line, the midline. I would not have looked at that one. I prefer the ones that are very close to the midline, the zero line, or below it. Like the pre and if you just if you focus on the one that are very close to zero, the midline or below it, then the majority of those have all of them have not failed. The ones that have been close to zero. Yeah, we're five for five. Zero. That's right. They're we're five for five. High win rate. I mean, listen, and here's the thing. Uh, I want everyone to appreciate it. I'm pretty sure Steve would agree with me on this point. This is not a holy grail. People often say, oh, this is a holy grail. No, it's not. Listen, this could fail too. This could be a false signal. But based on probabilities, I mean, we're looking at the market from a probabilistic perspective. Uh, we don't, I don't believe in holy grails when it comes to indicators either. I'm not saying that it, this is, I'm not saying this is a definite certainty uh, just because of a bullish crossover. But I would say is, look, as long as you control risk, as long as you look at where is the invalidation point, where is your risk point? This next chart backs it up. So this next uh -huh. chart is total market cap, Bitcoin, all altcoins. Yeah. Back in 2018, mm -hmm. we wicked up to here, right? Which is right about yeah. 753 billion. That's yeah. precisely where we came down to have our first, what I believe to be our first bottom in June and our second bottom in November. We're really respecting yeah. this level, the 753. If we break it, we're in trouble. We don't have a lot of market structure below it. We would fall right to this pivot point here or between, it's essentially between the bodies here at 535 yeah. and 575 if we break it. But so far, we're showing incredible support. And so far, if you're just looking at this chart, we're saying, hey, Bitcoin had a double top with incredibly strong bearish divergence. The bearish divergence played mm -hmm. out. Prices plummeted in all the crypto space right down to where it should have, right down to our previous wick high. And since then, since June, We've held that market structure beautifully. And then we just yeah. had our first bullish engulfing candle on the monthly and we're mm. making higher highs already. So the the signs yeah. are in that we have turned a corner and we have to continue to protect this area of 753 billion. That's a, that, that chart is actually, if you go back to that, Steve, that's a fascinating chart. I had not looked at that before. That's a very interesting chart. And yeah, I agree with you. If um, I mean that level needs to be protected, the white line you've drawn there at the 2018 top, that has to be protected if bulls are going to succeed. And I agree with you. If if that level gets broken, that would be a huge warning sign 
of major risk. But um, at the moment, you know, as long as it stays above that, it looks like bulls of control and the path of least resistance for now seems to be to the upside. Uh, let's see how that holds. Interesting chart. Thanks, Steve. That's a very good one. Let's go to the next, the next one. Yeah. And also, if we break this, I mean, yeah. if you're holding support since June and you break it, it would add mm. another year or year and a half to the bear market. It would be wow. devastating mm. because that yeah. much market structure is building at a critical pivot point. Yes. Th that would be that would show significant weakness in a very mature market. The next one is so in our previous chart, we had this bearish divergence with our top here yes. and our double yes. top. And what we've seen at the bottom of this market is incredibly strong bullish divergence forming over a six month period. This was formed mm -hmm. over an eight month period with the double top and this kind yes, of double yes. bottom. At the same time, we had our low here, a lower low here. And then with our indicators, yeah. we had a low and a higher low. But more importantly, at the same time is Bitcoin was in this long drawn out two year downtrend in the RSI. And we were kind of in this pressure cooker and we had mm. bullish divergence break. The pressure cooker broke. And at the same time, every six months, we have a stochastic RSI cross on the yeah. one week chart. Every six months, it happened in the middle of 2021. And then at the, at the beginning of 2022, and then in the middle of 2022, and then at the beginning of 2023. So we had this momentum come into the market, but we have one problem. We're holding resistance at this red line. And this red line is not just any old red line. It played a critical role in every single bear market. It was critical support mm -hmm. COVID crash, critical support 2018, critical support 2015, and now mm -hmm. it's our resistance. So we had this bullishness come in, and is that our, a moving average you have there on insurance? Yeah. Is that red line? Yeah. So this moving average is the, oh, so it's the 200. Yeah, it's the 200, 200 week. Yeah. So right above our heads, this is incredibly strong resistance, and we're printing smaller candles as we approach it. Mm -hmm. It's going to take some time to get through this, I believe. We'll have to see what what what's going to happen, but... This next chart, in more of a, a short-term time frame, on the daily mm -hmm. chart, we have some bearish divergence that's been forming over a couple weeks. So not nearly mm -hmm. as strong. When you have divergence form over six months like this, incredibly strong. When you have divergence form over eight months, which happened with our double top, very strong. But we do have some short-term bearish divergence forming. Price is making a high, another higher high, another higher high, and another higher high. Yes, while the indicator yes. is making uh, lower highs. Lower so highs. Yeah. this could be something in the short <clears throat> term that could trigger a short downfall at the same time that we're met with some resistance. Mm. So that's what I see playing out. And yeah. one thing to pay attention to is this chart here. And this chart we have uh, on the weekly chart, we have the 100 MA and the 20 MA. And mm. when this this yellow line crossed here in 2015, we're following a very similar fractal pattern to 2022 and 2023, where we had this cross and then we got rejected once, twice, three times, and then we had an explosion through of price for the first time in over a year. The same thing happened in 2015. We had a cross through once, twice, three rejections, and then an explosion of price. What happened in 2015, and this is not saying that this is definitely going to happen, but we have to look at the facts. In 2015, we actually came down to test our market structure after exploding through for the first time in well over a year. And we can't be surprised if we wake up in a few weeks from now and Bitcoin is below 20K and potentially falling. So I think long term, the, the big picture is saying like, hey, this bear market is on its really its last legs. We've turned a pretty big corner. It's starting to be a lot more bullish in the market. We haven't officially ended the bear market, but we're getting closer. But in the short term, we could have a little bit of trouble play out. And at worst case, we would go down and test our market structure until uh, we regain our momentum to, to actually cross this 200 week moving average. 
All right, guys, thanks very much for watching this video. And by the way, guys, make sure you check out Steve Courtney's website, CryptoCrewUniversity.com. I'll put the link for you guys in the description. Do go ahead and check it out and do check out what Steve has got to offer there on that site as well. By the way, I do enjoy watching your YouTube videos. Uh, you have a great, um, uh, you have a great skill for communicating ideas in an engaging and entertaining way and also educational way. So I, I do like your, uh, seeing, I do like uh, having a look at your videos, watching your videos. Uh, so guys, I'll put the link for uh, Steve's YouTube channel as well in the description. Do go ahead to his YouTube channel and subscribe to Steve's YouTube channel as well. Steve, listen, you've been a great guest. I've enjoyed talking with you today. And hopefully, let's see what happens in the next uh, several months and hopefully we'll have you back on and uh, see what's going on. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. We'll talk soon.